this thing. We are live here, and I'm super excited to introduce and bring to you guys Jamie Galvin, who is one of our um, students. We, we've been working together for the past like six months or so, huh? Yeah, been yeah, I was one of the very first members, actually. I know you were one of the founding members, the, the yeah, yeah. members, right? But uh, I'm super excited you're here because we've been meaning to do this for a long time and you've been crushing it in your business. Yeah, and I, it, I can definitely tell you've been doing a lot of awesome things um, in your personal life that I'm super excited to talk about and share today. And um, I think you've been a huge inspiration for a lot of the people um, that we've been working with and also for us to see you know, how much you're making it all work. You're a single parent. How about you um, let us know like everything about you, your background, your story, and let's get to know Jamie a little bit. Okay, so I'm from Las Vegas. Right now I'm living in Sacramento, California, but I've only been here about four years. Um, and I went to cosmetology school at a Nevada school in Vegas in like 2011. Mm -hmm. So I've been licensed since 2012. So for me and my career, like Vegas being from there, it was very easy for me to build my business starting mm -hmm. out because, you know, I had grown up there. I had all my friends. I would do like my old middle school teacher's hair. Like I just had all these like connections and people. And so it kind of put this idea in my head that like, oh, being a hairstylist is kind of easy, right? Mm -hmm. Like I didn't really right. have to like do too much. I just knew people and they came right. to me and right. I did really well there. Um, and then just like a little bit about my story, I'm pretty open sharing this. So, <clears throat> you know, at one point I got into drugs and drinking a lot and stuff. And so obviously I wasn't able to keep my job and like succeed mm -hmm. that way. And that's kind of why I moved to Sacramento here. Um, you know, trying to get sober and like start yeah. a new life yeah. for myself. So I just celebrated three years sober a couple months ago. So it's been really good for me. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. Congratulations. So super exciting. Thank you. Um, but it was hard, you know, being in a new place and not mm -hmm. knowing anyone and trying to start out in my career. And so I made, sorry. Okay. You're outside. <laughs> So I made a lot of like mistakes as far as not sticking it out at salons and mm -hmm. just kind of moving around thinking, oh, the salon's just not busy enough. Right. But really, I was bouncing around like I couldn't, you know, find a career like a, you know, a salon that I felt I could succeed at. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got into like education. So I was a teach teaching for a Nevada school in San Francisco, which I don't know if you guys are familiar with the area, but that's a pretty big commute to come from yeah. Sacramento to San Francisco. And I was doing that for a while and I loved it. Um, and then I got pregnant, right? So mm -hmm. I really couldn't be making that commute. It was too hard on my body. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to start mm -hmm. all over again. Like, and it, um, you know, me having my son was like a big shock for me. Cause I was like, I really can't just be, you know bouncing around doing this. Like I need stability for myself and for yeah. my son. And it really hit me like, what am I gonna do? You know, like yeah. here I am as a hairstylist, like I wanna stay in the industry. This is my passion, but I literally felt like I would never make money doing what I was doing. Right. And I got really lost and really like discouraged. And um, so I started working at an Aveda salon and mm -hmm. I was making minimum wage working there. Wow. And um, yeah, Aveda salons are actually very like high end salons. Mm -hmm. So I was bringing in the salon about over 5,000 a month, not including the retail that I was selling, but mm -hmm. I was only making minimum wage. And I just felt like spending time away from my son, you know, it wasn't worth that money for me. Right. Mm -hmm. I was, I always knew that hairstylists could make good money. I made good money in Vegas. Um, my sister's actually a hairstylist as well. Wow. And um, she does hair makeup for weddings in Vegas, mm -hmm. which she does really well because, you know, it's Vegas. Everyone gets married there. So right. it's like, <laughs> for that. Um, and so I just knew at that point, I was like, something has to change for me because I don't want to give up on my, you know, I love this career. I'm so passionate yeah. about doing hair. Um, I love that, you know, it's an industry that I could have a face tattoo and whatever mm -hmm. I want. And no one do what you want, be that. your own person, right? I could be who, yeah, like whatever I want to do. And um, so I decided, you know, after working at the Savita Salon and kind of building a clientele there that I was ready to go and venture out on my own again. I was like, I'm ready. I know what mm -hmm. I'm doing now. I feel more confident. Um, and so I opened up my own studio in May. So that was pretty recent. Awesome. That's like right when I started working with you guys. I think I was yeah, like, like not very, even open yet when I started working with you guys. Yeah. Um, and so I had this whole plan in my head that it was going to go well. And I'm married at this point, right? And I have my son, so I have help from his dad. And, um, you know, when I originally started working with you guys, something stuck mm -hmm. out where you were telling me, oh, it's really hard when you're not around like supportive people. Yeah. And I was yeah. really feeling that with my, you know, ex-husband. We're divorced now. And, um, you know, he kind of treated my job always like a side hustle, like something I did for fun. Right. 
like, oh, you don't work hard. You just like play with people's hair all day, yeah. hair, you know? <laughs> yeah. And um, so he did not like respect my business at all, like at mm -hmm. all. Like it would be, oh, well, I have plans for us this weekend. I'm like, okay, well, I'm booked this week. Well, you can reschedule yeah. your clients. It's not that serious. Right, right. Um, and so I felt like I didn't have any like support or anyone who really like believed that like the vision that I saw for myself. And a lot of things happened between us other than that. But mm -hmm. in June, we end up splitting up. So now here I am, a single mom. I just opened a business. I don't have a lot of clientele to be having the steady income. And, um, you know, it hit me really hard. Like, it hit me really hard because I was like, well, what can I do? You know, like, what do right. I do? Yeah. Like, I have no savings. I've invested everything into my business. Yeah. Now I'm a single mom. Now I have to add more bills because I right. have to get my own apartment for me and my son and pay lawyer fees for my divorce. Yeah. And all that pressure coming down on you at once. Yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, at that point I was like, I'm just throwing in the towel. Like I don't want to do yeah. nothing. And I sunk into this like depression, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I really like thank this group and you guys a lot because you were the ones telling me you have to keep pushing for yourself. Right. And I started reading all the Grant Cardone books and I started doing all this and taking it seriously and networking and marketing. And I do have another job. I teach at a cosmetology school, but it's really part time. Right. Um, and it, I got that job just to kind of have some type of a steady income here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, it's been really cool to see my journey kind of transform because back in June during my like, you know, breakup and all of that, um, my mom was paying all my bills for me. So mm -hmm. here I am, you know, I'm 26 years old, right? I have a kid who's relying on me and he's right over there, right? Have, <laughs> yeah. And my How old is he now? He's two. Yeah. He two just turned two in August. Uh -huh. Awesome. Son, do you want to say hi? <laughs> Hey, buddy. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So, you know, I, love I have it. him and I have my mom Bye. paying my bills. I know. Bye. Go watch your movie. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so, you know, it was hard. And um, I just had this like moment, you know, I'm reading the Grant Cardone books. Here, let me help you, son. Sorry. <laughs> I'm reading the Grant Cardone books and I'm listening to what you and Katie are saying. And it's really like, you know, crazy to me because i'm like it, no one else is responsible there you go go sit down you want a snack go sit down um you know like no one else is going to do this for me right right no right. one else is going to do this for me and i'm hearing all these success stories in the group as well of people just crushing it and killing it and i'm like why can't i be those people you yeah, know like i was always having right? this like victim mindset of like well why can't that be me and it's 100%. like, it can, but I have to put in the work for it, right? Right, and right. so, yeah, since working with you guys, I've tripled my income. And Ooh. I've totally been able to just stay afloat for me and my son and, like, live a good life, you know? Love it. And I know there's, like, a lot more coming. And I'm definitely not making what I want to make. But from where I came from, like, it's been huge yeah. for me and really helpful. Yeah. I love that. It's, I mean, I love hearing the story too. Like I'm sure everyone listening here can resonate with so many of those, you know, um, in, like you've had a roller coaster ride this past year from what I it really sounds like, have, right? So, yeah. Um, but you're battling through it, you know, and, and you're you knowing, you know, in your mind that, you know, as long as you put forth the action, the effort and, uh, keep a good attitude that you're, you're going to make what happens, uh, what you need to happen, happen. Right. Absolutely. And so I love that. And it, it's so awesome that you're so vulnerable about your situation and you know, what you're struggling with. Cause so many people kind of like bottle that up and never talk about it. And, um, you know, I've seen you just like, you know, it, since our time meeting each other, how much you've even been so open about that on like social media and, um, through your post. And that's, you know, allowed you to create this almost celebrity effect in our group. And, you know, we get to know what's going on with you. So it's awesome to, you know, hear it come from your own mouth, like, you know, yeah. how much things are changing and, you know, how it, all it was, was not really us. It was just, you know, you, you know, getting yeah. involved, you know, in a community and that support group and, um, you know, taking the action, getting your mindset on the right track and, and you've done it all yourself. Right. So um, I'm super excited for you. I'm super happy for you. I'm sure everyone yeah. else is. So I want to talk to everyone in the comments real quick. So if you guys are here, uh, go ahead and let us know, type in hashtag live or hashtag replay. If you're watching on the replay and uh, we want to talk to you guys a little bit, let us know who you are, what you do, where you're from. Do we have anyone in California here? Do we have any single parents in here? Do we have any moms in here? Let us know in the comments. I'm going to read a couple and then we'll dive into what we're going to talk about today is which is one, 
how you tripled your, um, sorry, I just banged my mic here. Um, how you tripled your, your income um, from the time that we started working together over the past, uh, it's been six, is it six months about? Since, yeah, right about, yeah. Right it was about May. six months. Mm -hmm. And um, how you're getting uh, a many, many referrals from people that are now coming in, how you're yes. turning discount shoppers into long-term clients and how you're creating simple posts on Facebook and Instagram to get attention and book new clients. So we're gonna talk about those things today, but first uh, I'm gonna talk to our people a little bit and uh, let you know what they're saying because I know you're on your phone right now. Um, so let's take a quick look here. Bree Holt is here. She says, I'm here supporting our girl. <laughs> it's so <laughs> awesome to see you know, how, how this community has all become so close. And like, I love that, you know, you guys are all like, actually like good friends now, you know, just from yeah. being a part of this group. I've built and this a community. lot of great relationships from this group. And that, that's what I like really think is the biggest aspect of success is like you said it yourself, like getting surrounded by, you know, people that are also pushing and wanting more and, and looking to get on the right track or looking to hit that, you know, 10x goal that they have in front of them. And, you know, having that and hearing the success of others and what other people are doing makes you want to succeed more. And, you know, you're the perfect instance that like people see your stuff all the time and say like, I want to do what Jamie's doing and stuff like that too. So like, it, it's so awesome. Yeah. Um, Ashley's here. She says, hi, Jamie. Virginia's here. Um, Eleni said, are you willing to share your numbers? Would you mind sharing like where you were at um, when we first met and where you're at now with your numbers? Definitely. So after paying like all of my expenses, right? So my rent, my inventory and all that, my first couple months in business, I was barely making like four to six hundred dollar profit for the whole month. Wow. So that's pretty crazy. Um, and I didn't realize, like, I just calculated my rent. I get a really good rent for the area, and I'll share that, too. I don't mind. So mm -hmm. I only pay $400 for my studio the month. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, I'm getting a steal, $400 the month. Like, I'm going to be profiting a lot. But I didn't, you know, consider, like, retail products and right, inventory right. and all that. So I was barely profiting, maybe max, like, 600 the month when I first started. Wow. Um, I also, because I work at the school, I only work in the salon, like, three and a half days, sometimes only three Mm -hmm. So right now, you know, I'm working three days a week. That's it. But on a good month in the salon, and it's been averaging very well for me, just on the salon, I make about 3200 And Perfect. that's only working three days a week. And that, that's a huge jump, like, you yes. know, um, from where you're at, and especially now you, you have to take care of your kid and you have to, yeah. um, you know, you're working on growing and expanding your business. And even you just signed, are you, did you sign the lease on the new? I haven't signed it yet. yet. I'm still kind of negotiating and doing awesome. a lot of things, but. I'm at a point where I feel like I could get a bigger space, maximize my income, leave the job at the school and dive yeah. full in. And with the tools that I've learned and the networking and the marketing and all that, I know that I could be successful. And so, yeah, I did find a salon recently. Um, that's perfect. It, I don't need to do a build out for it. It was a previous salon before. And the perfect. owner who's retiring is including all the equipment in the lease. So I will have shampoo bowls and everything already set up, good to go. Um, but I haven't taken the leap and actually signed yet because I'm still trying to figure out a couple. Getting it all together. But, but that's but awesome. At least like, I know it's an option, you know? Right. That's, that's cool. That's, at least that's now like I know. Super inspiring, too, that, you know, you went from going through a really tough time and, um, you know, you've got your, your kid and you're having to support yourself and your kiddo and, um, you know, grow together. And now you're even going from that scarcity mindset to now the growth mindset of wanting to not just, you know, grow your current business, but expand and owning your Absolutely. own salon has been your dream, right? Has that yeah. been like a big goal for, you for quite some time, like to move into um, a actual salon, like ownership? I wanted to open my own salon. Even when I was in cosmetology school and we would do those products, like the project. I'm so sorry, mm -hmm. I'm just put you guys up for a second. I'm just getting my son. That's all good. Um, I, this, is, this is raw and real right now with Jamie Galvin. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, it's all good. I like it. I think it's, yeah. it's authentic. Everyone else probably resonates with this too. <laughs> you know, I just learned, like, I got to be myself. And that's why I'm okay, like, just being in the moment and being myself yeah. like this, you know, because I feel for me too, it was hard for me to build, like, genuine connections with my clients because mm -hmm. I was always trying to, like, fluff my life, you know? Right, Make right. Like Put on a front. I have this perfect life and, you know, and it's crazy because even going through my divorce and all that, like, I'm being open with my clients about what's going on. And a lot of them are coming to me and saying, oh, my gosh, like, I'm going through this, too, or I went through right. that, you know. So it's like, I'm just a real person. You know, mm -hmm. like, I got all my, you know, I don't even try to be perfect. And it's like, sometimes I feel you're lying to yourself. Like, I used to say, oh, I make great money doing hair yeah. because I wanted everyone to think that, you know. And it's right. like, 
I was making 600 the month. What do I mean? My business is doing yeah. so well. You know, it's like, if I'm saying that out loud to everyone else, like yeah. I'm trying to convince myself. So I just, you know, I just it's, it's the craziest thing. Like I see in this industry is everyone, it, it's almost like, you know, everyone's just become so complacent to being okay with struggling that they think it's normal, yeah. you know? And so Absolutely. like, and, and it's not normal, right? Like it, it's, it's not okay to be in those situations where you're not able to take care of, let alone yourself and you know, the other people in your life too. Right. Absolutely. And so like, um, it, it's, it's so amazing to see, you know, that you're like, I feel like you've become so much more enlightened since the first time we met you. Like when we first met you, it was like a little, a little bit quieter, like getting used to, you know, talking to the group and stuff. And now you're just like in front of the camera, talking it up, telling your story and, you know, being yeah. yourself. And I think at the end of the day, like that's what creates success is just being you and, you know, taking enough action to do um, the things you need to do to, to grow your clientele, grow your business and get yourself out there. Right. Like people are starting to notice you now from you sharing your stories and, um, you know, also just putting yourself out there. So um, I'm super excited to talk about all of that. Um, if I see uh, Sue is here live, Edith's here. Ashley says, I'm an esthetician and mom in Missouri. Love Jamie and it's been so amazing seeing her grow. Uh, Jennifer is here, Penny's here, Norma's here. Bree says, heck yeah, girl, do it. Uh, Virginia says, congratulations. Shelby, Lori are here. Um, Ashley says, hashtag mom life. <laughs> Rest in the you running around. Yeah. Um, and Susan is here as well. What is going on guys? Um, well, let's go ahead and dive in. So, um, you tripled your income in the past uh, few months, um, mm -hmm. took a little bit of time to, you know, get, um, everything situated in your personal life, but you were able to do yes. that. Right. Yes. Um, I would like to share a little bit, like what was the hardest part about doing that? Like how, how did you manage like going from that situation where you were really, um, you know, struggling, making like four to $600 a month to like, pushing yourself out of that comfort zone to starting to see that growth that you needed. What did that look like? And what was the hardest part about it? It was hard because again, it's very awkward to be vulnerable and to yeah. meet new people and to do all of that. And it's really like, I can't stress enough how much Grant Cardone's books have changed my life. Like they really mm. have because I was setting goals that I knew like, okay, maybe I could do this, you know, mm -hmm. but really like, the salon that's like my 10x goal like owning the salon yeah. and now here i am like even moving forward yeah. someone about elise and doing all this yeah. where before i would be like oh i can't do that yet you know so it's mm -hmm. really just changing my mindset and again realizing like so i come i'll just give this little story real quick yeah. i come from like my mom who was mm -hmm. helping me pay my bills but she's a very simple mind person in the sense of like money like mm -hmm. she's like you just see people on Instagram and Facebook and you want to be like them. That's the top 1%. You should be happy having $7 in your bank account. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, like that's my mom's always been like that very humble mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. But I know growing up, I have five, so we struggled really hard. Like I yeah. saw my mom go through that and having my son, it's like, if there is another way and all it's going to take is for me to push myself out of my comfort zone, I'm going to try to do that for my son and myself, yeah. you know? Um, and help take care of my mom. She's older and she's retired, yeah. but my mom's, you know, like she deserves a better life too. We all do. But yeah. I think so many times like money is such a dirty topic to people. Like they don't right. want to talk about it, no you know? And it's like it. wanting money. There's nothing wrong with that. And like my ex, yeah. everybody told me you're too ambitious. Right. Why don't you settle my whole life? And I'm like, yeah. what the heck? So hearing Grant Cardone, who's obviously very successful saying people will call you a maniac. I'm like, right. people do like people always tell me, oh, you never stop. You do too much. You need to slow down my whole life, you know, right. and, um, 100%. about anything that I did, you know, whether it was the drugs or whatever, yeah. like I've always been all in 110%. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know what? I just kind of took that mindset and thought I could do it. You know, like I've right. already been having people tell me I'm too ambitious in this. If I just, you know, focus more on the steps to get there and yeah. put 110, but in a more organized fashion. So I'm right. not all over the place. 100%. I was like, I really think I could do this. And it just kind of hit me like a brick. And I was like, I'm just going to go to networking events. I'm going to talk to people at Starbucks. I go to the same Starbucks every single day. I probably never said hi to somebody one time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I'm going to go put myself out there. I've gotten so many clients from Starbucks, just chatting <laughs> to people at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And they know my name when I come in and they know my order. And I'm just like, I chat to everyone now. Um, and it's just like kind of breaking out of that comfort right. zone. Like you said, putting yourself out there. But that was the hardest part. It really was. Yeah. Like um, getting that first 
like, hello, like getting yes. yourself out of that shell and like, you know, just, just starting to make conversations like that. That's the first step. And, um, in any step of growth is, um, you know, if you want to grow your business, you've got to get connected with more people. Right. And Absolutely. the only way to do that is to find a way to start a conversation. Right. Absolutely. And so like, it sounds like, you know, uh, before we keep diving deeper, like you were in this sp space and what really like allowed you to, to, uh, shift your mindset was one, um, kind of surrounding yourself with that motivation. Um, so, you know, listening to audiobooks, reading books, um, some of which were from Grant Cardone, which yeah. um, I listen to uh, frequently just to keep you in the right mindset. Like if you Absolutely. aren't in the right mindset right now, you're feeling unmotivated, like find something to snap you out of that. And like, you know, what I do is I wake up every single morning, I'll play, you know, a podcast from Grant Cardone or um, Ed Milet is one I listen to or a couple other ones that I yeah. find like. So find something that you like that gets you fired up and start your day with that, like every morning consistently. And that's a good way to shift out of that complacency right off the bat, because you'll see yourself more open-minded, more wanting to do more. Um, and, and that's the first step, right? And Absolutely. then after that, it sounds like, you know, you, you were taking that and, and taking action on it. And um, uh, what, what you started doing was realizing that um, I don't really have any goals right now, or at least any goals are there worth hitting, right? Yeah. And so you, you started to set some bigger goals for yourself. Did you start to write them down or like, Absolutely, how did you? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So do you so have I a planner from at home or little goals that would pop in my mind? Like, Oh, I'll open a salon one day, you know, yeah. but I started actually like mapping them out in like the steps, putting myself on a time frame for each one. Right. And then just kind of making sure I was doing one to three things a day right. towards my goal. And that really right. works for me. And so 100%. I actually write my goals out uh, two times a day. So okay, I write awesome. them out in the morning and then I write them out before I go to bed and I write them out mm -hmm, two <laughs> times a day. And then I keep them in a little notebook that fits inside yep. of my purse. And if I'm ever like waiting for my client to process or on a lunch break or whatever, and I'm starting to feel that, I'll just bust them out and like even add to them. Like something right. might come to my mind and I'm like, no, I want to do this too. And I'll just add it to there. Right. Um, and so keeping that like on hand for whenever I'm feeling right. like that has been really helpful too. Well, yeah. I mean, if you don't have anything you're, you're you know, shooting for, like it's easy to just go all over the place. Right. Whereas yeah. if you have like targets, goals um, with deadlines on them, you know, it, it's, I always use this analogy. It's like, you know, if you're ever back in school, you weren't going to study for a test unless you had a date that the test was on and you probably wait till the last minute to hit it, but at least you'd study for it and get it done. Right. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. so like the same thing goes for your goals. Like if you don't have any, you know, dates on them, they're not specific. They're not clear. They're just generalities. Like you're not ever going to do what it takes to get anything near there. Um, and we call that usually like, you know, setting up your GPS too. you know, like if you're getting in the car and you don't know where the heck you're going, like you know, yeah. driving circles, like I'm new to Arizona, so I don't know where the hell I'm at half the time. Right. So yeah. if I don't punch in the address I'm going to, like, I'll be driving all over the valley. Right. Whereas if, um, you know, I, I have a clear destination, I know exactly where I'm going. I can just follow the roadmap. Right. And so that's usually like the first step that most people need to go through is, um, you know, one, getting your mindset right and getting that in check. And the best way to do that is listen, you know, to, to audio books, podcasts, uh, reading books um, from some of the best and, um, you know, hearing what they've done to get out of bad situations and modeling that too. But also then shifting and figuring out, okay, what do I do with this newfound motivation? Um, how do I set goals and have something I'm actually working towards? Absolutely. Right. And so it sounds like that it's exactly what you did. You started setting goals for yourself. And then from there, like, when did you have your like first win or your first success? um throughout like moving towards those goals was it just talking to someone at starbucks or what was like the first instance of success that you saw when you you know had this newfound goal targets motivation so for me it was the first networking event that i went to and i was super nervous and i remember literally like almost leaving because i was just like all of these people are more successful than me they're mm -hmm. like you know real estate like they all had these businesses that sounded super like you know out right. of my league is how yeah, I yeah. and I was getting ready to leave and I kind of mingled a little bit in the beginning but I was kind of sitting by myself and as I'm leaving the girl um she was a massage therapist okay. and she was walking to the bathroom and she was like are you leaving and I was like yeah she's like no don't leave I want you to do my hair and mm -hmm. I was like oh okay she was like can we trade and do like I'll give you a massage you do mm -hmm. my hair and I'll send you like lots of referrals and I was like sure and then she literally went and introduced me to everyone and she Perfect. was like, no, you have such a great business. Like I'm vegan too. Cause you know, I use only vegan cruelty free products. Like that's mm -hmm. my big thing that sets me apart. I feel right. And, um, 
you know, I left there just feeling so good. Like, Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't even care if she really does come get her hair done. We exchanged information. I don't care anything. It just made me feel, like, kind of empowered. Like, oh, these people care what I have to say. Like, that was when I realized, like, my business wasn't a joke. Because even though, you know, I I knew what I wanted, I'm setting these goals, because of how I was raised and my ex-husband, I always had that, like, you know, subconscious feeling of, like, oh, my business is just a joke. And I left there and I was like literally a new woman. I was like, my business is not a joke. People want what I have to offer and I'm going to do it. 100%. And and it just, after that's when I started talking to people at Starbucks more and like really going for it, you know? And she did end up getting her hair done and I got a massage by her and we refer people to each other all the time. That's so awesome. I love that. And that's that's what we told you what would happen. You just got to get yourself out there at that event, right? Yeah. It's crazy. It can happen in the most unexpected times and circumstances like you just said where, you know, as long as you're getting yourself in front of people, which is a lot more than half of the population is ever willing to do. You know, most people will stay up cramped up in their salon suite or hanging out in their chair during their off hours or just hanging at home when they don't have work. And that's not going to get you out there. You got to take that first step, whether it be, you know, getting into a networking event or getting into Starbucks and starting a conversation. But, um, you know, just doing something that gets you that opportunity to have, you know, something happened, right? Whether it be starting the conversation or someone starts it with you and that's what happened. And it sounds like that sparked yeah. you know, that first step. We're like, whoa, me just showing up here. I wasn't even the one who really started the conversation, exactly. but it happened, right? And then from exactly. there, it starts to unlock your mind and, and you start to see how many opportunities are truly out there that most of us just don't even ever take a second look at. So um, I love that. What was the first event you went to and how'd you find it? Um, I found it on, uh, is it the Eventbrite? I think Eventbrite. Okay. Yeah. And what did you search called, like just your area or yeah, I just searched my area. And then it, when it asked category, I put business and it was a free one and it was really close to my salon. So I was like even better. Um, and it was, it was called like biz chicks or something like that. And yeah. it was like all women. Yeah. That's and cool. We just met for dinner and like we had a, one of the ladies speak, you know, and I have been to be an I before as a guest for like mm-hmm. someone that I knew and that yeah. was really cool. But I didn't feel it was worth the investment just for the simple fact that like most of the members were all men and mm-hmm. I do some men's hair, but not really, you know, yeah. like I wanted a group that would be more women who understand like, you know, more of what my business is. Right. Right. Um, so I was kind of discouraged about networking events because of my experience with B and I, yeah. I was kind of like, Oh, I don't think this is for me. Like it, just, right. you know, put a weird, but this one was called biz chicks and it was all women. And I really liked I it. Good so. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love it. And that's the thing too. Like that goes for, for networking for just about everything. Like your first attempt or your first trial or your first, um, you know, instance of doing something may not be, you know, all it's, maybe hyped up to be or what you thought it was going to be, but that yeah. doesn't mean you can stop doing it because if you never went to another event, you may have never had that spark and yeah. you know, that enlightenment that, Hey, maybe I should be doing more of this. Right. So Absolutely. Um, and I'll, I'll turn this into a little bit of, you know, a teaching moment for anyone who's watching, like the, the best and fastest way to, um, you know, get yourself out there and grow your business and move forward into making more connections is going to be like face-to-face networking, like finding a way you can get in front of a large group of people or even a small group of people. Um, you know, you can look on places like Eventbrite, meetup.com. Um, there's Facebook events all the time in your local area, no matter how big or small your town is, like you're able to find them. But like, if you're stuck right now and you want to like make a difference and you want to get more connected in your local community, you need to go meet some people. Right. And the fast way to do that is find out where people are hanging out. And that is an event like that, right? Because you're putting yourself in front of a lot of people at once. It's going to get you a, a faster result than if you're waiting on people to find you on social media, right? Absolutely. Um, that's why you want to attack, you know, multiple things at once. Uh, but just keep taking action and putting forth effort to start in conversation with people so that you have the opportunity to book more appointments with them, right? And that's exactly what happened. So um, you had the success with the networking. What was next? You took that momentum. You started talking to more people at Starbucks. I remember this. Uh, I remember you posted in the group. You were like, yeah. you know, I, I, I went to my event. Clients from client. Starbucks, left and right. And I don't think I ever told the group about this, but I will. So for a little bit, I was really tight on cash still at this point, right? So mm-hmm. I started driving for Postmates. Oh, wow. So I was, deli- anytime I had like downtime between clients, mm-hmm. um, you know, I would drive for Postmates, like deliver people their food and stuff. And so... 
I'm now going into five or six different restaurants a day, right? Because mm-hmm. I bring people to food. So then I started using that as an opportunity to talk to more people. So while I'm waiting for people's food, yeah. I'm in there speaking to everyone who works there, passing my cards, just chatting it up. I would talk to the people I would deliver to. And if they look like my ideal clientele, I would be like, yeah. oh, by the way, I'm also a hairstylist, you know? Exactly. Um, and I got clients from people I've delivered food to before. It's, cra- it's crazy how you can, it, it, it's so easy to get clients, right? Like it, it really is. It, it's not that hard. Like you're struggling with getting clients right now just because you're not talking to enough people. Yeah, you're not putting yourself. And that was my main problem too, is I felt that I was never in front of enough people, you know? Yeah. So especially doing Postmates, like I was like, oh my gosh, I'm literally (laughs) meeting so many people a day, going into new restaurants, like, you know, waiting five minutes. Use that opportunity. (laughs) Anyway, yeah. And I was like, I'm just going to talk to everyone. You get a couple clients from that and then you can leave Postmates and go back to work, right? And that's probably what you did. (laughs) Exactly. So it's like, you know, even when it seems... Because it's easy, too, to get in the mindset of like, oh, I shouldn't have to be doing Postmates. Like, I'm a hairstylist. I shouldn't have to be hustling for this money. But really, it became more of like a fun thing for me to do. Go sit down, baby. You want more? (laughs) Okay, go sit down. Sorry. It became a more, you know, like, kind of challenge for me, too. Like, oh, I wonder how many people I can get in front of today and, like, talk to, you know? So it actually became, like, fun for me. (laughs) I I love that. I it. It's, it's crazy, like, you know, yeah. once you get out of your shell a little bit, what can happen and then what momentum it creates for yourself, right? Like, that's, like, yeah. crazy. Like, I, I, I'm sure a lot of other people go through the same things, too, where, like, um, and I know Katie and I did, too, for a little bit uh, a couple of years ago when we were first getting, like, started out. Like, we had a little bit of success, but then things, like, really, really slowed down to the point where, like, we were really struggling financially. Yeah. and like, we were even looking into, you know, getting a job with Uber or something like that too, just to pay the bills, right? You have to do whatever it takes, right? But um, I think the moral here is like, you know, make use of your situation and like do whatever you can at any point in time to just talk to people because that's what's going to get you closer to your intended result, which is ultimately to, Definitely. you know, get clients in your chairs and, and make good relationships and, and make good money, right? That's what you want, right? Definitely, yeah. Um, Katie is on the live. She says a real life boss babe in the flesh. <laughs> Ashley says that is so smart regarding your goals. She needs to find a little notebook like that. Um, is it just something you picked up at Walmart that you're keeping track of your goals and stuff like that? Honestly, or I got it at the dollar store. It's one of those there tiny little flip books yeah. that like flip up. You don't have yeah, to have some $20 store. planner or uh, anything like that. Like you can literally just use a notepad. Like write down your goals yeah. twice a day, morning and night. I guarantee you that's going to get you a lot more fired up than you currently yeah. are not writing it down. Like yeah. who's going to see more? Down who's writing goals, down? But then I write down um, a gratitude list too every day. So yeah. three things I'm grateful for. It just shifts my mindset. It helps me out. 100%. And that's all it takes. Like all the only reason you're not succeeding in your life or business or making the income you want is just it's all up here, right? Like anyone can put forth the action to get it done. It's just about doing it. And that's all up here, right? So those little shifts and changes, you know, waking up in the morning, the first thing you do is get locked in and focus on your target or your goal. Um, and the first thing you do before you bed, go to bed is do the same thing. You know, who's going to succeed more, the person who does that and focuses on their goals, writes them down twice a day, or the person who's just waking up in the morning, dragging ass, not really knowing where they're going, yeah. just going with the flow. That's not what we want to be doing, right? Um, Definitely. But uh, Virginia also loves that idea of what you're doing with there as well. Vanessa's here. Trish is here. Michelle is here. V is here. What's going on, guys? Ashley says, face-to-face networking is my jam. I'm in a local networking group and attend a monthly business mixer. It's so much fun meeting other business owners, 100%. Like in Jamie's case too, like the best way um, to create a lot of momentum is to get involved and find a way you can get in front of other business owners because they understand referrals, right? And so you did that girl's hair. Did she end up giving you some referrals and you got some clients out of her? Um, the massage therapist? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We give re- people referrals to each other all the time. Our salons Perfect. are not very far from each other. I've yeah. gotten at least, at least 10 new clients from her. That's awesome. 10 new clients, like, let's just say, how much do they usually spend on an average ticket? Like My average bucks? ticket right now is 150 So, like, 150 bucks. So, 10 clients at 150 bucks. I probably don't need to do the math, but I'll do it anyway to show everyone. That's 1500 bucks. She had some girl with networking event talking to this person. And maybe these people come back. Yeah. Maybe they come like, I don't know, four, four more times. It's like six grand. Maybe they come back more than that. That's way more than that. Right. So yeah. like it's the numbers add up when you, you, when you talk to people, when you see people and when you create those referral sources also from other business owners or even just ideal clients, 
that's what allows you to grow faster than the the one to one stuff you know is finding those those key referral partners those people that can really you know consistently drive new business to you right so um do you have other instances i, I know that was like one of our main topics today like how you're getting a lot of referrals what, what are you doing to really create those referral sources for yourself and also like making sure that you're um constantly asking for them if that makes sense so after I rebook my client, so even if I've done their hair 30,000 times, because sometimes people will say, oh, yeah, I know so-and-so, you know, like I'm going to refer them and then I don't hear nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll jot down the person's name. So then I see my client again and I'm like, hey, I never heard from Jenny. Yeah. Like I remind them that way, like very just like blunt forward like that. Like, oh, hey, I thought your sister just moved from the Bay Area. Wasn't she going to come see me? I have availability. Mm -hmm. Tell her to come. <laughs> and I feel the more you remind people, then yeah. eventually they just get in the I habit of saying them. Yeah. 100%. Or if it's a new client and they really love their hair, you know what I mean? I tell them, hey, well, if you have people who want similar hair than you, like, you know, and you love your hair, you could just send them to me. Um, I just tell people or, oh, post on Facebook and tag me. Mm -hmm. So they'll tag me on the Facebook post and then I've gotten clients that way too. Perfect. So you're doing multiple yeah. ways of asking referrals, but... I think the better point is that you're constantly asking for them and following up with people that could be good potential opportunities. Right. And do you have a, do you have a process where like, is this like every client who comes through your door, are you asking for a referral or do you have a process to it or how does that usually work? I have to do it every single time because if I just decide, Oh, I'm going to do it once or oh, right. only for new clients or this, then I don't actually do it. Some of my clients get annoyed a little bit, but not in like a super bad way. Like they'll be like, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I don't know anyone. Yeah. You're going to ask me again. Like they already know it's coming, you know, because it's so like part of my right. rebooking service. It's literally I'm like, OK, let me rebook your appointment. And then right. while they're looking at the date, I'm like, oh, by the way. Right. <laughs> do you who know do you anyone know? else who might yeah. want an appointment on my books? Yeah. And that's OK that some people like say that because like even though they may not have someone for you right now they may run into someone at, I don't know, Starbucks supermarket or whatever that they start yeah. a conversation. Maybe they're looking for hair. Oh, guess what? I know the perfect girl for you, Jamie. Right. So yeah. that's why it's so important to like, you know, make uh, asking for referrals, both part of your client process, but just part of your process for talking to people in general, because people know people and that's who you need to be doing business with is people. Right. So um, that's perfect. I think like everyone, who is watching this uh, live or replay, like one action step you can do like right now and take action on immediately is one, you know, reaching out to your current clients and just saying like, hey, how's everything holding up with your hair, skin, nails, makeup, whatever, um, and uh, let them respond and then say, great, well, hey, I'm, I've got a couple, you know, bookings left this month. Um, do you know anyone who would be a good fit for getting their hair, skin, nails, makeup done too? I'd love to have more clients like you, right? Absolutely. And that's a good way you can immediately get clients. Like the fastest way Absolutely. you're going to get clients is from your current clients, right? Um, someone just said it, planting the seed before I said it. I saw it in the comments. Uh, that was Virginia. Uh, but yeah, find ways you can plant as many seeds as possible, whether it be, you know, you starting conversation with people, you asking for referrals with people, um, you know, just getting yourself out there and also, you know, letting people know that you're hungry for business, that you're looking to grow and that you're looking to help people is going to uh, allow you to be more, um, not, not like, looked over um, from other people who, who come across you and have conversations with you. They'll remember you more is what I meant to say, right? Um, but with that being said, what's um, kind of a transition a little bit and talk about, um, this was the organic journey. This is how you like started from scratch with no money um, to really like start to get that momentum going. But um, pretty recently, like the past few months, we've been actually doing your, your advertising and taking that money yeah. that you made from the organic strategies and investing it back into the business, right? So what's that process Absolutely. look like and how has that worked out for you so far? Okay, so my first time running the ad was in September to mm -hmm. October. So that was like my first time running the ad. I got like 90 leads from this ad and I was booking clients literally like left and right. Like I was mm. overwhelmed because I work the other job, work this job, have my son. I couldn't even keep up with the phone calls. I feel like if I was more <laughs> on it, I would have booked four, five times as many clients. I'm not even kidding. That's like crazy. they were just rolling in and I was like not expecting it. Like sometimes I would get like six to 10 leads a day. And I was like, this is kind of overwhelming, but in a good way, you know? <laughs> good <laughs> and, problem um, to have, right? Not being able to keep up with everyone. <laughs> definitely. So for me, it was kind of thinking about to 
so I've worked at other salons before where we've ran like Groupon, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember I was able to retain the Groupon clients because I didn't treat them like crap because they were a discount, right? Mm -hmm. And other stylists complain left and right or would literally skimp on the service and say, oh, who cares? They're just a Groupon client. And so I always remember how that put like a bad taste in my mouth because I'm like, we never know why people are looking for a deal, you know? And I feel like a lot of the people were actually new to the area Mm -hmm. and looking for a new stylist. Like when I was really talking to them and getting to know them. So I just decided, okay, who cares if they're only paying me 60 bucks today? If Mm -hmm. I could get them on my books for future, like this is a lifetime client, you know? Right, right. Um, And so I went in with that mindset. And I think in general, the way I treated all of my clients moving forward was so much better because I was just so grateful to have these people, whether they were paying me $5, I didn't care because I knew if I did the right thing that they would come back. So I ended up booking, I don't remember, I told you guys that at one point, I think it was like 15 clients who actually showed up because there are no shows. Like, I'm not going to lie. There are people from the yeah. ad who are no shows or they rescheduled their appointment multiple times, yeah. like last minute, happen. you know, yeah. and um, I, you just can't focus on them. That's what right, it is. Right. You just can't focus on them. But I would say my retention rate for the customers I actually did do was about 80%. That's very high. 80%. So you, you yes. were getting these people just uh, in the door, right? Yes. You had a model that was working. You said you got like how many inquiries? Like 70 to 80 in like, the first? Yeah. Like, how many months or just first month? It was in the first month alone. I got about 80 people. The 30 days, you got 80 people yeah. reaching out to you. Yeah. You're booking appointments like crazy. You said like how many like per week on average? Like at least five? I don't know on week because people, like I said, people were booking and then not yeah. showing. I know I physically did 15 people. 15 appointments were done um, within those first 30 days. And that's, that's perfect. That was like the, it was, did you ever run an ad before that? Never, never, never. done anything. That was the first time you ever yeah. ran an ad. <laughs> yeah. So that's I was awesome. like, I expected it to be good, but I did not expect it to be like that. Like I was like, oh my God. Like it was so crazy to me. That is, that is amazing. And I retained about 80 of those clients, 80% of those clients. So wow. I did so 15 of those, too. Like, like, so you got 15 in like the first, this is just the first 30 days, 15 yeah. new, new clients. Uh, they were all like color clients too, right? So yeah. you're getting them in, um, getting them in the door and 80% of those were coming back for their second appointment, which was, you know, um, like I mean, you're, you're having to take it 150, $150, right? So mm-hmm. probably close to, thousand dollars if not more um yeah. profit from just running one little facebook ad huh <laughs> yeah and i was able Amazing. to sell retail to these clients like i really stepped oh, up retail again. Involved now too, i'm yeah. getting more income than i'm used to right and yeah. i've already like established my life kind of living on a lower budget so with this extra income i was throwing everything back into my business I love and it. so then i'm selling retail and making yeah. even more money um Perfect. because i didn't even have money at first to afford to buy retail to sell to my clients so this kind of like made me you know i was investing everything back into the business and then like doubling my return every time it was crazy it was crazy i love that virginia just said that that's the business owner mentality like that's that's what you have to have is you know taking those profits putting it back into the business so you can keep doing that um until you get you know the point to where the business is producing you exactly what you want if not more and then just keep growing with it if you need to, right? Like um, the hardest part of, of getting your business established is really, you know, that first couple thousand dollars a month. And then from there, like once you get some momentum going, you know, you'll hit four or five, six, you'll hit 10. Then the next thing you know, you'll hit 20. Like as long as you keep doing what you're doing, which is that business owner mentality where you grow, take the profits, invest it back to the business, maybe take what you need for you and your son, right? But put the rest back into the business yeah. for growth. Like that's, that's how you really build something amazing. Right. And like, I'll say like, that's been the key factor of, of Katie and I's success too, is like, we, we were willing to, to stay broke no matter how much money we're making. We still do this um, just to keep growing. Right. Cause we want exactly. to we can take care of not just ourselves, but our family, our future kids and things like that too. And like, I love that, you know, you, you were doing that early on. Cause a lot of people, like I see it so often, especially in this industry, like they'll have that maybe same success running an ad or something month one. And then they'll be like, all right, that was great. Like I'm good yeah. now. I got my clients and I'm all set. And then what happens is like, you just had this spike. And then now what you're doing is basically turning off what worked and stop doing what you did to have the success 
then you'll kind of flatline a little bit and then you'll lose some clients and you'll slowly go back down to where you start and you'd be like, what the heck happened? Absolutely. Was it the, the, the month, the season? Oh, it's just my client. You start to blame other stuff, but it really was just you stopping doing what you were doing when you first started. Right? Yeah. And so I, I love that. And I love to hear it, you know, from your word of mouth that this is literally what you've gone through in the past few months and you're still doing it. Like we're still, um, we're getting those ads. Uh, they're running right now. Right. I think you had yeah. a few, few people reach out to you today. I hope you got them booked. <laughs> yeah, I did actually. And you know, this time, because like I said, last time the I was overwhelming. So this time yeah. I thought personally during the holidays, having the deal, I was going to get even more people. And that was yeah. just my mindset. I'm like, oh, it's the holidays with this deal. People are going to want to get their hair done for the holidays. And it kind of was a lot slower than previously. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I didn't get so much traffic at first, but I am still booking the clients and it's still, you know, it's, it's working. Okay. Yeah. 100%. So, and that's and it's what's going to happen too. Yeah. Because before when I first ran that, my books were a little more open, you know, yeah. now I have those ad clients like rebooked plus my old yeah. clients plus all of this. So I think if I was getting the same return, I'd probably be overwhelmed anyway. Right. So I think 100%. it's like a happy like medium for me right well, now. That's what we like to call like a um, little bit of like a popcorn effect, right? Where like sometimes you'll have a, a, a instance where, you know, things will start popping off really fast. But in most cases, like the most growth happens when like, you know, just like when you put a bag of, of popcorn in the microwave, like it takes a little bit to heat up. And, you know, sometimes it takes way longer than you want it to because you're maybe really hungry, right? <laughs> but then yeah. when it's popping and starts going, it just like goes like wildfire, right? And so like, that's why you want to have like multiple sources of uh, client generation and client attraction going for you, you know, whether it be your networking, you know, like we talked about like Facebook groups, you've been really successful with doing that, some of the stuff you've learned in the program and things like that, but also the advertising, like all these things compound and just, you know, have clients booking and you should never rely on one source, you know? Absolutely. And I see that yeah. that's where that's where most people um, fail is like they expect the magical Facebook ad to just be the heart, soul and only thing that drives the business where it's, you know, it's, it's all the effort. It's all the angles that we're hitting and it's the posting on on Facebook that works. And it's also the, um, you know, the ad running while you're doing that. And then, um, you know, the networking that you're still doing every single day, you know, that's yeah. how you grow fast as you keep that compound effect going. So that is absolutely amazing. You had uh, over 15 clients booked over 70 uh, or 80 people in your first 30 days. And I'm sure like some of those people, like you still have the opportunity to book because you've collected their, you know, name, email, phone number. Yeah. So like you're building quite the list um, of people who have now eyeballs on you. Right. So I love that. That's amazing. So what's been like the transformation since that, like what's coming on um, up and coming for you and what's next after now we've got these systems in place. What's, what's next for Jamie? 2020. So definitely. I'm going to keep kind of figuring things out as far as opening a bigger space. Um, like it was cool for me to even be in there and like touring it and getting the rundown of the lease because these are mm -hmm. all things that I always thought, oh, someday, you know, I'll do right, that right. someday. So to really be in the moment of that, I was like, holy shit, you know, like yeah. this is so crazy to me, it's right? Happening, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to continue to be pushing forward. Like I'm trying to figure out like more of my business plan. Do I want employees? Do I want mm -hmm. a new rental? Like what would really benefit me in the long run in my right. area? You know, like um, and being in California, things are a lot different than other states. So every time I think, oh, this is going to work, then I research. I'm like, OK, now I have to pay X, Y and Z to even get a permit to do whatever, you know, right. like California is a little tricky like that. Um, so I know it's going to take time, but I'm still just pushing forward. And, um, you know, I just started my studio in May. Mm -hmm. So my lease there was a year. So that's going to be up in May. So by May 2020, I'm going to have my salon for sure. Let's do it. Like, I'm that's not even, excited. No questions asked. Everyone, yeah, in might not happen today or tomorrow, but. Everyone in the group, make sure we keep an eye out for Jamie. We're going to make sure she does this by May 2020. Locks down that lease on her salon, living that Definitely. dream. I love it. All right, you guys. Well, um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to drop a little hashtag Jamie below in the comments. Go ahead and hashtag that below if you did enjoy this and if you do potentially want to hear and listen how Jamie was able to do this, how she was able to learn how to get the networking in place, the Facebook groups, the um, strategies of just talking to people um, and also getting those ads running that got, you know, 80 people reaching out Absolutely. to people right on the books. Um, so drop that below in the comments, but I'll leave this now open uh, for you, uh, Jamie, to commit, maybe share, um, you know, what, what do you feel like, what, what words of wisdom could you maybe give um, to the, to the people who are struggling out there who are maybe 
like just getting by right now, like barely taking home a profit to kind of get out of that mindset, get out of that uh, complacency and, and start attacking a bigger and better goal. I would say, you know, it is like working smarter, not harder. Because mm -hmm. when you are all over the place, I felt for me like I was working 24 seven doing all this stuff, you know, but nothing was working. But really, yeah. I was just doing stuff and not understanding like what the result would even get from it. You know, like I thought if I was talking to this person or, you know, I don't know. So I think it is more like making sure that all the stuff you're doing in your business is actually like towards your goal, you know? So like mm -hmm. really strategizing. That's what I would say. It's 100%. really about understanding like, why are you doing this? Like for me, it's like, well, why am I going to Starbucks every single day? Like I'm barely profiting, but here right. I am spending money on coffee every single day. Right. Why not like use that as an opportunity to make more money? Right. Because I know I'm going to have this coffee addiction and go to Starbucks even when I'm <laughs> broke. Like that's kind of how I am. You know? 100%. So looking for more like opportunity yeah, and so it's in your everyday life to, to um, you know, educate yourself, motivate yourself, and also just start more conversations, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So just making sure, yeah, like you, every opportunity, because that was the thing too. I'd always be like, I don't have time yeah. and nobody <laughs> can, you know, so just cut the, cut the excuses too, because right. that's so, you know, and I get like that sometimes too, where I'm like feeling all sorry for myself and it's like, wait, but hold on, you know, like none of that's even true. Right. So I don't know. It's just kind of cutting the excuses and just having like focusing on your goal and your dream a hundred percent. Yeah. Cause then you're going to see everything as an opportunity for that goal instead 100%. of a distraction. That, that's where everything's manifested in order to, you know, create any amount of success. You got to see what that looks like first in your own mind and then create it. Exactly. Right? 100 exactly i love it well this is some fire you spit some bombs today i hope you know everyone who's watching got a ton of value from this if you did drop a bunch of hearts below and also drop hashtag jamie uh, if you want the opportunity to uh talk to me jamie or uh anyone else in our in our group who's having this kind of success and um you know moving towards and attacking their bigger and better goals and um pretty soon we'll have jamie hopefully at that 10x income um or gets you toward that uh, that six figure income here pretty soon because i know you know there you've been through a lot of hardships and struggles these past couple months but you've still been growing despite that so yeah I know now that you know um things are really starting to unlock for you that we'll, we'll be able to take things to the moon together so i'm super Definitely. excited can't wait i appreciate you taking the time away from the little one running around and uh <laughs> course, during the night so i love it well any questions you guys have for jamie while we're still here um, go ahead and drop them in the comments now so that we can uh, ask Jamie any questions. You can ask us any questions um, and we can um, make sure you guys get the most value out of this. Um, so we'll hit, hang around for a couple more minutes, but I do have one uh, question here from Virginia. I think she meant to say, how did you do your ad? Like, how did it work? Um, what, what was the whole process for you? So I definitely tried to do the videos in the course myself, mm -hmm. but I cannot commit to something if I'm not passionate for it. I'm just that yeah. person, you know, and computer stuff, all that. I was like watching the video and then I don't know if it was ADD or what, but I would watch it. And then I'd yeah. be like, I have no idea what the heck this video just said. And I'd right. watch it again. And I was like, I am wasting my damn time. So I did have Katie and Jordan build my app for me. Um, it just worked out better that way for me. Um, that way too, I wouldn't have to go in and keep tweaking it because I knew they yeah. could just do it right the first time. So that was the first time I ever really invested into my business like that because I was getting extra money from the referrals. And I was like, you know what? If I'm not good at someone, I might as well pay someone who is. Uh -huh. So I that's how the ad kind of worked for me is I didn't really have to do too much. except yeah. Send some pictures over, write a little bit about my business, and then I just handed it to them and it was totally success for me. So. I love that. And, and thank you so much for the for the compliments. I'm glad we were able to deliver. We're going to continue to do that. But I do want to say, like, even outside of having us, you know, do things like that for you, I remember you had a story where you, you've had that mindset about a lot of different things, which I really uh, resonate with. And it's been a big, um, you know, aspect, to, I think, Katie, and our success is like, you don't have to do like everything yourself, right? Like, in all yeah. the, it's, it's hard to think that, um, you know, when you're in kind of like a, 
a, a rough place financially, you know, to, to pay people to do things or to invest money in things that you're not sure is going to work. But, yeah. um, you know, what's the cost of trying to figure it all out yourself, putting forth that time, energy and effort Absolutely. you know, to be miserable and then maybe not even work um, yeah. and, you know, beat yourself up about it from that. Right. Like you, you've kind of had the mindset where like, if I don't enjoy doing something, if I don't want to do something, um, I'd rather find someone who's good at it and invest my money into getting them to do it. And even yeah. if it costs a little bit more than I expected, like I'll just go find ways to make the money from my clients or getting new clients so I can invest exactly. it into the business. Right. And you did this for like something with Instagram videos or something, right? Yeah. So I paid someone to edit a couple Instagram videos for me. Unfortunately, it what didn't come out that great. I didn't even post them because it's not though, right? on the same page, but I spent 25 bucks. Cause Nothing it was just crazy, like this right? little thing. And then right now, actually I'm paying a friend to book my clients from my ad for me. So I'm still not awesome. even doing that. So Perfect. I have a friend who she's pregnant. She's kind of staying home and just wants a little extra money. Um, and so she signs into my high level whenever I get leads and she responds to people for me and I just pay her for it because awesome. even though, yeah, I could take two seconds out of my day. I just, I can't, you know, like right. I don't want to be, I just want to show up to work and do hair and have a yeah. on my books. And I don't want to have to worry about, texting clients and sometimes clients are crazy they'll text you at like two in the morning right you know yeah, so yeah. I'm like i need a receptionist i need a business line where they my clients can just call they can book on my app right um so yeah i don't even do my own like you know booking right now i have my friend right. doing it all my clients just call her text her she books all my stuff and i just pay her for it because right. i used to say oh well you know if i have more time to like go through all these leads and book the clients i'd make more money and it's like so why not pay someone to do that for me? Because right. I already know if it's done, I'll get more money. 100%. I think yeah. like you, you got to kind of figure out what your strong suits are. Um, also where your time is best spent and figure out how you can create solutions to, um, you know, either one investing in yourself to not have to spend time that you don't need to spend um, because you can get money back. You can't get your time back. Right. And Absolutely. so um, yeah. well, that's very important, but also like, finding ways to leverage, um, if possible, other people's time to help support you on your journey, no matter where you're at. Like, um, you know, it's not like you're multimillionaire um, just yet, right? You know, asking for help, right. from people yeah. who are, you know, maybe looking for opportunities too, and it's working out, right? So um, I think that's a, a big eye opener Definitely. too, is like, you know, you, you should never be afraid to ask for help, you know, um, in any situation. So um, I love that, that's yeah. awesome. Well, um, let's see. We've got a lot of people typing hashtag Jamie below. Go ahead and drop that below. And uh, like I said, um, we'll be reaching out to you guys. We can give you guys some strategies that Jamie's used, um, some resources. And also, um, we may even um, connect you guys with Jamie if you got any questions with her, if she's got the time. I know she's quite busy booking all her appointments. <laughs> Definitely. Um, with that being said, guys, um, thank you so much. If you don't have any other questions, this was amazing. Thank you so much again, Jamie. We'll let you uh, get back to uh, living that hashtag mom life and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Any last words, comments, concerns you want to share with us? Um, yeah, I just want to say, you know, like I was almost, I guess, I don't want to say embarrassed or anything, but I was almost like, no one's going to want to hear what I have to say because I'm barely telling you guys I make 3000 a month, whatever, mm -hmm. right? But at the end of the day, like, this is just the beginning for me. Like you said, I've only been at this a little bit of time, you know? So even though you know, just celebrate your small wins. I know yeah. that I'm, what? You want your water? Like celebrate your small wins. Don't be hard on yourself. If your income goes up $100 that month, you need to realize, you know. That's a win. That's a win, exactly. So it's like for me, you know, I might not be, you know, the most successful person, right? But I'm celebrating all Coming. my successes and kind of realizing, you know, yeah. what I could do more of. And I like to share that because I think a lot of the time when people speak, it's people who are already like very successful and it's hard to relate to if you're struggling, you know? Right. 100%. And I love it. That's why I, like, I love having conversations like these because it's so much more relatable than, you know, also if, if we bring someone on who's, you know, making million dollars in their business, like sometimes that's, that's so far fetched. Whereas like, like you just said, like small wins are wins nonetheless. And, you know, I'm super excited to see where you're going to be, you know, a couple months from now, like, like I said, double it and double it and double it till we get to the point where we keep, you know, 
growing it to the moon, right? So I'm Definitely. super excited. We got a lot of people saying thank you to me. Um, we got Layla saying hashtag small wins. I love that. Um, yes, the last thing yes. is I want to make sure people can find you on uh, social. So where's the best place to follow you or get in touch with you? Um, so my Facebook, definitely, you guys can all add me. It's just Jamie Galvan on Facebook. Um, and then my Instagram, I'm really not too Instagram savvy, but I try my best. So, but my Instagram is let's get rooted and then a little underscore. Perfect. And I'll make sure you can comment that uh, below after this, if y'all wanted to get the direct into that too. But uh, thank you guys so much. Give again, Jamie, a bunch of hearts for being here. Um, she's got her hands full. So um, I really appreciate it. And uh, sharing your story, being so vulnerable and inspiring everyone in this group. So um, keep rocking and rolling. And I can't wait to see where you're going to be in a few months from now. So let's keep the, awesome. the put on the gas and keep going. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. Bye talk guys. to you soon, Jamie. Bye-bye.